Thanks to Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and other systems, online marketing is changing a lot. And we're, Rocky and I are here in the Rackspace London office to see Emma, who is the director of online marketing here at Rackspace. And we're going to talk about social media and its impact on marketing. Who are you? So hey Robert, good to meet you. I'm Emma. I'm the online marketing manager for Rackspace in the UK. So I look after quite a varied range of subjects at Rackspace. So I look after predominantly our, our SEO efforts, our paid search efforts and our social media. Um, I started out in online marketing at a, a search agency, so that's very much where my search background comes from. Yeah. And then as as you have to do with, with um, you know, areas like SEO and PPC, they're continually changing and evolving as Google updates its algorithm every minute of the day it feels like at the moment. Um, so you have to keep learning and then once social media broke into the scene, again it was something else that was new to learn, um, I'm hungry, hungry to learn and always want to try new things and figure out how, how we, can, we can harness the latest big thing to, to help um, push our brand out there. Yeah, we were just talking with Fabio uh, about yes. strengths, right? Um, and strengths, uh, you know, when you think about SEO, it's almost algorithmic. You have to think about, okay, how, how is somebody going to search for the company that I, I'm trying to sell, right? In this case, how, I, how is a customer going to search for hosting, web hosting, or cloud computing, or something like that? And then how do you put an ad or optimize an ad so that it appears there yeah. and it's and it gets action on it. Yeah. That's very different than social, because social is all about us, people. Yeah, it's all about, um, it's almost like you're, you're trying to pull people in with your, um, with your social media and the content that you have, and you're trying to very much engage with paid search or SEO. You're just trying to figure out what they want and where they are at different stages of the funnel. So, you know, someone will search for hosting, it's very generic, then they'll figure out what they need, that, okay, I need some cloud. They come back on cloud and then they figure out there's a couple of brands out there that can give them cloud hosting and then they'll they'll reach out and figure out that they want to maybe engage with Rackspace. So yeah. that's how, how you can introduce people to a brand and I think the loyalty part and the, the really getting a feel for a brand is how is what we use social media for. Yeah, uh, Gary Vinerchuk, uh, who's one of my friends and, and uh, I, I talk to often, tells me that we're in the world of one-on-one -on -one marketing now, um, yeah. where we can actually talk with one person and take care of them. Uh, what does that mean for you and for what you're trying to do with social media here? Yeah, so you with with social media, you obviously there is your rather than just you talk at your customers now, you've got that one-on-one, -on -one, that interaction with them. Um, when they're not happy with you, they can reach out and tell you, but they aren't just telling you, they're telling everyone else that follows them. And I guess what it does is allow you to help them in a more immediate manner. So if they've reached out to you via social media, you can get back to them so you can understand what the problem is quicker. They can also get to know you as a brand. One of the challenges we have at Rackspace is communicating what fanatical support is um, because it's 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 not something tangible and quite often customers don't touch it because we're so busy in the background doing our fanatical support that they don't ever need to to experience it firsthand yeah. so it's a difficult thing as a company to put across when you say you know we've got this great thing it's really it's fabulous you're not going to get it from anywhere else it's difficult to actually almost market it if you like and social media is a great channel for that we can we can show people how we live and work every day how how we sit in this you know wonderful office and how we all interact with one another um, so social media is a good platform for us to be able to say this is how we live through our core values this is what fanatical support means to us yeah it's interesting because I've been talking to lots of businesses lately um, and some really hate Facebook because uh, when you talk to marketing people at, at businesses because they they want the me they want to shove messages down to the user and make sure that they're heard. Yeah. And Facebook protects users from that. Yeah. If I do a status message, only 12% of my followers or my subscribers or my friends even get to see that message. Facebook doesn't just pass everything along the way Twitter does. 
What does yeah. that mean to a marketer? Because now you have to play a different game, right? You can't just shove stuff Yeah, you've, you've got to, I think you've got to realize that it's not one size fits all and you can't push out one message across every channel. You've got to listen. What are people saying? What do they want to hear about? What are the trending topics? And what channels do different people want to receive that information on? And if you don't have your content right, no one's going to care about it. No one's going to share it. You know, social media, the backbone of it for me is all about the content. If you've got good content that people can read and learn something from, then they're happy to pass it on and share it. So you're looking for other people to share it, not for you to ram it out to the masses. Yeah. Social media still freaks a lot of business yeah, people out. Yeah, it does. Out. People, are, people are afraid of it because it's like, oh my God, people can see publicly what they want instead of picking up the phone and saying it to us directly. But you've got to embrace that. And it's one of our core values is transparency. You know, so if, if someone, a customer reaches out to us on Twitter because they're not happy, we don't try to mask that up. We know we will we'll acknowledge and then we'll help that customer out because you know, that's, that's how we view social media. It's just another way for customers to engage with us. Well, it's a very powerful tool to have too when there's a crisis. Yeah. You know, it, it, if we're ever down, and we, we've been down a couple times in our history, people can't always get through to the phones, right? Because it's a cri crisis. We have 180,000 customers around the world. We don't have 180,000 yeah. employees who can answer a phone. So all of a sudden they can't get through the phone. So Twitter and Facebook and yeah. Google Plus become important channels to get information. But it's also, it's just, it just really encapsulates the, the age that we live in that people might not want to talk to someone. They don't, they just want to say, you know, I want to reach out to, I want to reach out to Rackspace on Twitter because that's how I choose to communicate with people that I work with. That's how I communicate with my friends. I don't use a telephone or I don't use email anymore. That's not the, the route I want to go down. So I think, you know, you have to be understanding of the different ways that people want to communicate to you and accept it. And I think, it, I think sometimes big brands or companies are afraid of failing on social media. And you know, that's a part of it. It's a part of learning how you should conduct yourself online, how yep. you want to talk to your audience. So you know, don't be afraid to fail because it'll just be a blip. You can learn from that. Well, and that's what freaks a lot of uh, CEOs and leaders out because, oh my God, an employee can talk to the crowd, can yeah. talk to the, to the world yeah. and c can change perceptions of the companies. Now, some companies like Zappos really um, uh, embraces that and they force every employee, whether you're the janitor or the yeah. CEO, to tweet your, during your employee uh, training. But some, some companies really are freaked out by that and worried and, and the lawyers take over and yeah. they keep people from doing that. Where, where does Rackspace sit in that mix? Well, we're happy for Rackers to get um, onto Twitter and engage um, with people and perhaps give it advice if they like. But we have to be mindful, you know, we're a big organization. There are certain things that we can and can't tweet about. So what we try to do is just help Rackers understand where, where our stance as a company is on social media. And we don't prescribe what they should and shouldn't talk about to the nth degree. There are some loose guidelines that would say, hey, it's cool if you do this, not so much if you do this. Um, Pretty so much at, at Microsoft, we used to say, don't be stupid, right? Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't say anything that's gonna get anyone sued. <laughs> sued or, uh, well, with financial, you don't put financial, we're a public company, you're exactly. not allowed to disclose anything yep. that might affect the stock price yeah. before, if you're not allowed to do that, yeah. right? If you're the CEO, you're allowed to do that, yeah. but you have to be, uh, process driven yeah. about that right yeah there, there has to be some level of guidance there but you, you know you don't there's a hold handing I, I guess that's a nice way to phrase it you have to yeah. hold your hand a little bit but you don't necessarily want to be forceful with it but Rack, Rackspace is a crazy culture I mean if you're ever here or in, in Texas we have big parties we, yeah. we're a crazy loud partying group does does that freak people out inside yeah. the company? Because it freaks out a lot of corporations that, I oh my God, a, a drunk photo from Saturday night might show up and people might judge the company this way, right? Yeah, um, I don't think so, because I like to think of those elements that people then get to see the people behind the brand and the people yeah. that, are, that are at the other end of the telephone. We've had some crazy events here, barbecues outside, which was a summer of love and everyone dressed up in 70s clothes and people have different different um, initiatives through their team where they have um, the people teams are dressed up upstairs for the Olympics so there's guys walking around and maybe slight walking around rather and maybe slightly inappropriate you know 70s tennis shorts because they're dressed up like um, 
like one of the like you know John McEnroe or someone like that and and those things get shared across Twitter and it, I think it just helps people to understand that you know what at the end of the day there we're just people and it helps I guess for yeah. us to communicate that that nice side of our, our brand yeah how do you monitor uh, uh, what's going on in the world about rack space and our, about our I, I bet you watch competitors and what people are saying about the yeah, marketplace we do like I said earlier we want to understand what people are saying, what their troubles are, are, are with certain services or what their, um, what their perception is. You know, everyone has this big conception about um, security around cloud. So, you know, if that's a real, a real world scenario where people have concerns over it, then how do we help them understand a little bit more and, and how do we help them guide them? And understanding what's being said about our brand, around our brand, around our competitors helps us drive that content strategy that hopefully helps push our brand further out there. Very cool. I, you know, a lot of people get caught up on social media as a, uh, as a tactic. And I like to be more holistic about mm. it because I think it, it's a good storytelling te technique and it's yeah. a good way to um, build on other things that you're, you're doing with customers. and. Yeah. It, it, Tell me a little bit, are, are you thinking about that as a bigger strategy of how to talk with customers, work with customers, hear from customers? Or? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, we, we do hear a lot from customers on Twitter, and particularly when we, um, we, we send them lots of gifts. And they like to share that, you know, hey, Rackspace sent me this really cool cookie. We just sent one recently for the Jubilee. So we like to definitely have social media as a way for people, for our customers to, to engage with us and let us know you know, I guess what their thoughts are and just help them understand again what we're doing. Yeah. Do you ever get pressured to talk about ROI, you know, return on investment? You know, are you driving sales? Are you uh, causing the business to get better? <laughs> Is that something that you, you think about? Um, there's a little bit of that there, yeah, but I think we've got to push back and say, look, if, if acquisition happens off the back of social media, then that's just an added bonus. It's not an acquisition channel. We're not going to say, um, you know, we're going to get X uplift in business because we've started a new initiative on Twitter. It's, we just want to say, you know, it's, it's something that we need to be involved in. It's something that's happening around us. So, you know, we have to take part in the conversations, but, you know, we're not going to say that it's, it's a hardcore acquisition channel because people don't want to be sold to via social media. It's not, it's not why they're on there. It's not why they're, they're there, they're hanging out. It's they want to understand more about the brands and the new product launches and maybe troubleshoot some things that, that, that they need help with. Yeah. When I was at Microsoft and we uh, came up with this thing called Channel 9, which got very popular, yeah. one of our driving uh, principles, I guess, was to say screw you to the marketing department because the marketing department always wanted to collect email addresses <laughs> and always wanted, yeah. uh, you know, to Yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> yeah, well, wanted to treat it as lead generation, yeah. right? Is there some principles that you're starting to think about that, okay, this is how we're going to behave or we're not going to beg for likes, for instance, no, or something like that? we're not at all. And it goes back to, again, this, the whole content. When we've got the content strategy, it's, I feel like social media, it's a very organic thing. Like people like you if they like the content. People will retweet it if they like the content. If they learn something and they feel that it's, it's worth sharing, that's, that's, the, that's, the real, that's the real, at the real heart of it for me. You know, if you people care about what you've said and they want to share it because it's quite a precious thing you know if you say I'm going to release this to my audience and friends then you know you don't you don't want to be passing on you know rubbish content yeah. so if you've got good content that needs to be at the backbone of everything and then as I said hopefully then that people will start to understand more about the brand and why they might want to work with Rackspace. Very cool. Any other things that you're thinking about as a marketer about the world and how it's changing? One of my core strengths is ideation. So sometimes I see something break on, on social media or sometimes in marketing you've got these loads of really cool ideas but there's no real way to execute them because someone, someone else above me is going, that's not going to bring in any revenue. And social media maybe gives us that chance to do the little cool funky stuff that um, most marketers I think would want to do. Yeah. That's, that's a great way to end. Um, where do you get influence? What, what other companies do you watch to learn from or get ideas from? There's a couple that I've looked at lately. So um, perhaps Dell, they're always one that's, that's kind of quoted fairly regularly. And, and, and Intel, they've got a, an interesting um, approach to their, their circles. They've clearly defined who their audiences are. And I think that's, that's the nice thing about Google Plus is that you, you listen for a while, you understand the different 
conversations or audiences that are tuned into what you're saying there and then you can start to tailor that content to them and that's how you can reach out to all your different audiences you know we're we're a big business we don't talk to just one person we talk to you know we talk to the IT manager we talk to the developer we talk to the CEO of um, startups so it's been able to find that blend and I think social media really helps you understand a lot more about your audience and your customers than sometimes you're able to figure out from your own data because you you've got you know so much of it to turn to yeah where can people uh, follow you you can find me on twitter <laughs> my twitter handle is at lady blah blah and i'm on facebook too. and spell that out it's just lady l-a-d-u-i and b-l-a-a b-l-a-a very cool thank you so much <laughs> thanks robert good to meet you mm -hmm.